awesome, awesome. So good to be here. I'm so excited. Uh, you know, Nick and Ashley did a great job, um, but that's normally my spot during worship. And now I know why Pastor sits up there before he delivers the message because I couldn't, I couldn't watch you guys worship and I couldn't see your faces. And I'm so, like, I didn't, I never know that was part of how much I love connecting with the Father is seeing you guys enter in and watching you worship. So it was really hard for me not to like want to turn around and be like, are they liking this? Are they, are they getting it? Good. So anyways, thank you for blessing us with worship. It was very intimate, and it was also very precious um, for me to just sit and be. So I like that. Thank you. All right, ladies, are we ready? This is really cool. I actually have never got to be able to do two messages in one week, but I actually got to preach last Sunday night, and, um, you know, the Lord could have just let me reuse and repurpose the message, but he didn't. He gave me a different word expressly for you tonight, and he gave me that word first. Um, Tonight we're going to be talking about being filled like Jesus, and a couple people have prayed over me tonight, and they actually used the words filled and overflowed, so I thought that was pretty appropriate. Um, I was in a hotel room in Wisconsin about two months ago. And I was totally multitasking, even though I was by myself, right? So lots of times when I travel for work, I I joke with my husband that I don't even turn on the television. I just like to have that peace and quiet. But this time was different. Um, And and I had on um, HGTV, and then my husband texts me, and he was watching Designated Survivor. So I switch over, and I'm watching that with him. And I'm praying about what I'm going to be speaking about tonight. So I'm praying and watching TV and texting and on Facebook. Okay? Got it? All right. So I'm over in Matthew chapter 18. And um, are any of the light ladies here? Any of the? Okay. So one of, one of the sisters that goes to the light, she had sent me a message and, and, and told me to read in Matthew um, 18. And that's where Jesus is talking about forgiveness. But in the middle of of my four times of multitasking, I read Matthew 19, verse 1. And I want to read it for you real quick. So he had just given this long kind of dissertation, all totally in red letters. And then Matthew 19, verse 1. When Jesus had finished these things, he left. He left Galilee and went into the region of Judea. And he left, and the large crowds followed him. And that that little verse right there, Jesus left. Jesus withdrew. That was like a mic drop moment for me, was that Jesus had spent all of this time expending and expending and giving and giving and giving. And then when he was done, he was like, and I'm out. I've said it, and I'm good. Because why? Because he needed to go back and be with his father. And he needed to go back and needed to refill and connect. So if we can go to that first slide there, Miss, Miss Tish, I want to challenge us tonight, ladies, and I'm going to ask the questions. How long has it been since we have silenced the buzz and just been quiet? Are we even comfortable with that? Is it awkward to be quiet? We are so used to multitasking and being productive, and as like a, a multitasking working mom and a, and a boss, Like, I try really hard to not try and make my staff think they need to be like me Um, because I work more than I should. And somehow I feel like that makes that productivity makes me, like, feel more performed at work. And you know what? My boss has never asked me to skip lunch, and yet I do it all the time. He's never asked me to shortchange my children for something, and yet I do it. And I don't know why. I don't know why I have that buzz, 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 go, go, go. And it works well for me most of the time. But then there's other times that you need to stop. And you need to be quiet. And you need to not be in a hurry. You need to have a singleness of focus. Dove Valley. One thing. A quieted heart. There's an indwelling of the Holy Spirit, right? So we receive, and we have the Holy Spirit, and he dwells in us. But then there's an infilling. 
of the Holy Spirit, where every day, I got to get back. I mean, we wouldn't think of leaving our phones without the charger overnight. It's not happening. We take them to the charging dock, and we get them charged up, and we start every day with a full battery. Otherwise, it makes us a little unanxious and a little uncomfortable. And yet, ladies, we start so many of our days at 27%. Giving God a halfway distracted prayer, which he loves and he'll accept. But ladies, he is calling us to a place where we start every day 100% at capacity, 100% charged, 100% filled, 100% ready to whatever is coming at us for the day. I can't tell you how many days like I do it right and I'm poised and I'm ready and I've had my devotion and I've, I've read and I've had that Holy Spirit moment and then wouldn't you know it, about 10.30, Whoever comes across my path is exactly the same scripture that I had referenced that morning, and I'm all excited. I'm like, yay, Holy Spirit, yay. But the thing is, is that I never know the times that the Holy Spirit doesn't get to do that because I didn't have that moment and be, be prepared and be filled. So going over, um, I already read Matthew 18. So now I'm going to flip over to the next slide, go on past that one. Jesus withdrew. Just just entertain this for a second, ladies. I'm going to go back to Matthew. This was, this was so funny. I have to tell you this. Okay. You see this little piece of paper right here? This was me in the hotel room. You can, you can put a hotel room at whatever temperature it, you want when you're there by yourself. But I was cold and too lazy to get out of bed to go turn up the heat. <laughs> so, again, while I'm multitasking, texting Jake, watching TV and trying to get this message about having a quieted heart, I use this tiny little piece of paper to download tonight's entire message. It's just funny to me. It's funny that the Lord would do that. All right. So I've never really spent time, like in the Gospels, there's, there's four different men telling the same story in four different ways. And I've known that, like, all my, you know, Christian years, but I've never really, like, flipped back and forth and, like, read it this time and then re- read it this time. And so just, just for now, tonight I'm going to focus in, in Matthew. I'm just going to read these verses real quick, all right? Matthew 12:15. Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from the place. Matthew 14:13. When Jesus had heard what had happened, he withdrew, and he went to a private, solitary place. Matthew 15:21. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew. Matthew 16, 14. I'm sorry, 16, 4. And Jesus left them and went away. 17, 1. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and he led them up to a high mountain all by themselves. Matthew 19, 1. When Jesus said these things, he dropped the mic. That was the one that started it all right there, Matthew 19, 1. Matthew 24, verse 1, Jesus left the temple and was walking away. And then verse 3, Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to him in a very private place. Ladies, how long has it been since we've withdrawn, since we went away, since we've left? Our kids, our husbands, our Facebook, our social media, our phones, and we have just went to be filled. Go ahead and flip to that next one. This is a picture of what it looks like. Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. In all of his majesty, all of his greatness, he could not operate from the place that he did without knowing that he himself could become deficient if he didn't withdraw. But why, why did he do that? He was the Son of God. Do you think that God could have accomplished everything without that private time? Don't forget that Jesus is our example. So he had to do it so he could teach us how to do it. 
So Jesus withdrew because even for him, it's not about necessarily being alone and it's not necessarily about being quiet, but it's about being with your Savior, being with the one that, you're, that you love and creating that space for him to pour into you. And even for Jesus, it was for his own sake that he would spend time with God. And ladies, for us, it's for our own good that we would do it. It's not for gold stars. It's not for what you have to be equipped for, although God will do that. But it's for what he wants to do in you to live in a place of love where you can dwell with your father. All right, so I want to spend a little bit of time in Matthew 14. All right, so I kind of practiced preach this to Jake last night. He says it took 12 minutes. He timed me. I did it really fast for him. But he, I, at the end of it, I asked him, I said, did you think that it, I, it made it sound like I was talking bad about the disciples? And we agreed that maybe I did. Yeah. So um, I respect the disciples. I love the disciples. We're going to be friends when we get to heaven, okay? But if it comes across that I am being a little, I don't know, I'm presenting it in a different light, okay? Don't, don't be offended by it and don't make it feel like... Um, that we're high and lofty and we're speaking against the disciples. I'm just, just pointing something out, all right? All right, so in Matthew 14, 13, John the Baptist had just been beheaded. And it was, it was gory and it was gruesome. And when Jesus heard the news, he needed to go be alone. And so when he did that, he went, he went away and he went to go grieve and to be with the Father, and to, to like work through his emotions, because he knew at some point these people are going to be looking to him, watching his reaction of this really bad news, so he wanted to go and deal privately. And right when he had done that, at the same time, the disciples were just getting back from, from a, a mission trip, let's say. And they'd been out healing, they'd been out performing miracles, they'd been out doing things, and so Jesus is at a, kind of a low and the disciples are up here at a high, and he sees that they need him. They need to be able to download and decompress the weekend that they just had. He really wanted to talk. So he was able to give up his private time, and he went to be with them. And he let them tell the stories, and he listened to them. All right, then immediately after that, the word says it better than me, so I'm going to read it, okay? Matthew 6, verse 30. Mark. I was in Mark. Good job. Okay. Appreciate you guys helping me. All right. So, Jesus had withdrawn to grief. Okay. At the same time. Then the apostles gathered around him to Jesus, and they reported all that they had done, and they had taught. Then because there were so many people, people gathering around him, no one had even had a chance to eat themselves. So come with me and quiet yourselves to the place and get some rest. So they went away by them into a boat to have a solitary place together. But many saw them leaving, and they recognized them, and they ran on foot from all the towns, and everyone got ahead of them there. And when Jesus landed, he saw that the large crowd had already formed. And Jesus had compassion on them. And they were like a sheep without a shepherd. And that's how Jesus viewed the situation. So he began teaching them about many things. And he began performing miracles and healing them. And by this, the time was late. So the disciples came to him. And they said, this is a remote place. It's already very late. Send the people away. Send them away so they can go to their surrounding countrysides and their villages. So that they can buy some food and get something to eat. Anyone ever read it? Quite like the emphasis that, of what I put on there? So Jesus saw the crowds. He reacted in compassion and love and healing. The disciples saw the crowds and they're like, hey, we're spent. We're done. We just finished all of our miracle doing. And, and, and you're kind of stealing our alone time with Jesus. And what I'd really like for you to do is go home. I'd really like to just send you away. And, and, and on the cusp of this, Jesus gently rebukes them and reminds them of who he's with. And what does he do? He feeds. He feeds them all. So it was out of that place of fullness that Jesus responds to the feeding of the 5,000. All right, in the same light, we've got the story of, 
um, immediately after that, the disciples are put into the boat and they're sent across to the next place, right? So immediately again, God's trying to help them out with the withdrawal process. So he says, guys, get in the boat and go this direction. He stays on the beach and a storm comes. And so the same disciples who they were just talking about the miracles that they had performed, they had just fed the 5,000. Now these disciples are in a storm. And what happens? They respond like this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Anxiety, self-reliance, struggle. They stay up half the night trying to, to find their own way to work this out. And then Jesus sees them struggling. I promise, girls, when I get to heaven, Jesus is going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. But then I'm going to ask him if he rolled his eyes at me. Because I'm pretty sure that Jesus rolls his eyes at me. I'm just saying. So I picture Jesus kind of rolling his eyes at the disciples when he is just continually trying to outpour. He's an awesome, amazing, miracle-doing God. And yet they're struggling against a storm and they don't ask for his help. So Jesus comes on the scene walking on water, and they don't even recognize him. They think he's a ghost. Then he calls out to them, and they're even more scared. And he says, and he says, okay, leave that up there. That's good. So then he calls, and he has Peter come out with him, right? We know the story of Peter walking on water. And, and the first time that there was a storm, Jesus was asleep in the boat, and he spoke, and the storm was quiet. This time, the disciples are in a boat, there's a storm, and Jesus does not even have to speak a word. His very presence on the scene scene caused the waters to relax, caused the storm to settle down. All right, so when he got into the boat, he climbs in the boat with them, and the wind died down, and they were completely amazed, for they didn't understand the significance of the miracles of the loaves, And their heart were hardened to it. So if you'll go to the next slide, ladies, what I want to focus on tonight is just the simple idea that Jesus, from a place of fullness, teaches us when a situation arises, he reacted with compassion. Because he was full. He was full of love, which equipped him to react with compassion. The disciples, they reacted with a little bit of irritation and impatience. So ladies, when you're wanting to pray for patience with your children, with your husbands, with your jobs, how about starting praying that the Lord would fill you up? Get alone with God in that quiet time, and he'll equip you from a place of fullness that you'll respond differently because you're not going to respond out of deficiency and out of lack and out of emptiness and out of stress and out of strife and after busy. You're going to react out of a place of fullness and a place of love. So you'll be able to carry around more patience and compassion when you have more of Jesus in you. And the second example we gave, when there was a situation and the storm was there, Jesus reacts in peace and prayer and confidence. Jesus was teaching them about faith, and they were missing it. Two opportunities, back to back. He just wanted to say, I'm the God that could feed all these people. Why don't you ask me for help? But instead, they were focused on them being irritated and then wanting to go home. There's a storm. I'm the God that can heat, that can calm the waters. Why don't you ask me for help? But instead, they strained and they were anxious. Jesus operates in faith and trust. And sometimes we might be a little bit like the disciples and operate out of being a little bit self-absorbed and self-reliant. That third example was um, in the Gospels. They had to call for Jesus to help them because there was a little boy that was possessed with a demon spirit and they couldn't cast it out. And Jesus had to come and help them. And he responded with faith and with trust. But it was their own self-reliance that caused them not to be able to finish the work. So, so Jesus is teaching, if you'll go to the next one, sorry. So it's easy for me to give those examples and you guys to think, well, yeah, but that's, that's Jesus. Like, that's why he could react with passion. 
that's why he can react with the answers because he's Jesus. And I just kind of want to take that excuse away. Okay? Okay. So it's not because he was Jesus. It's because he abides with the Father. All right? So we can abide like the Father. So we can have the power to react like Jesus reacts. And where does it come from? How do we get to be like Jesus? We abide with the Father. Let me just hit you with a few more verses. Is that okay? All right. I printed this, but I printed it too small. (laughs) I'm having a hard time reading my own notes. All right. So Jesus was fully man. He was fully human. He was fully tempted. And yet, because of the oneness that he had with the Father, he was able to operate without having sin. So I just want to give you um, a couple of verses. You already can see right there, John 10, 30. I and the Father are one. Let me flip over here and read you guys. John 5, 19. I tell you the truth. The Son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees the Father doing. Because what the Father does, the Son does also. That's Jesus speaking there, though. That's in red letters. Ladies, could we adopt this as our verse? That we want to we have that unquieted heart, that unhurried heart, that would spend God, time with God, and that we would get to a place where we have continual oneness with the Father. That maybe it could be, I tell you the truth, Lori can do nothing by herself. She can only do what Jesus tells her to. She can only do what Jesus has done. Could we get to a place where we could operate out of such a fullness that we would react in the way that Jesus would react? That we would love people the way that he would love them? It comes by spending time. John 3, 34. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without limit. All right, you guys want more? You want more? Let me read that again. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without limit. Amen. I'm amen in that word. That's a good one. All right, let's flip over to Colossians 1.19. For God was pleased to have all of the fullness dwelling in him. For God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwelling in him. Ladies, would he be pleased to have all of his fullness dwelling in us? Yes. Seriously, go back to that phone example. That was a good one. How does it make you feel when your battery's on 2%? (laughs) Uh But how often do we go about our day spiritually? Like under 25%. Ladies, we have got to make sure that we get to our docking station and that we get filled up time after time after time. But you know what? I'm so thankful that Jesus was was like human, and yes, he was perfect, but it doesn't mean that everything was easy for him. So I am taking away the excuse that that it worked for Jesus because he was Jesus, but I am giving you this bit of encouragement that it wasn't easy for him either. So Hebrews, is it 5, 8? Hebrews 5, 8. Although he was the son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. All right, so Jesus had to learn obedience as well. So it's okay that getting up at like 5.30 a.m. isn't natural for you. Okay? I don't know when you do your devotions. Wherever, Wherever you set your quiet time to be, it's okay if that doesn't come naturally. But you're going to have to learn to be obedient to make it a priority. If you want to grow, sometimes the excuse has got to go. Oh, I'll say that again. Thank you. All right. So if you want to grow, the excuse has got to go. And ladies, there's too many times when we just allow ourselves to to sleep in or we allow ourselves to, you know, my, my excuse, honestly, I don't know where I got it from, but I feel like it's that I need to spend time with my kids. So, you know, like we do dinner and homework and baths and all this, and then we have this little thing that we all just like sit on the couch together and and like watch an hour of TV. 
And it occurred to me one night that my kids wouldn't care one bit if I turned that into an hour of reading the Bible with them or talking with them about things. And so, like, sometimes we we kind of make these excuses for ourselves, like, well, like spending time with God is at the expense of something else. And I've shown you tonight that spending time with God sets you up to be gracious to everybody else, right? Sets you up to have more patience, to have more compassion, to respond in love. So, ladies, make time to have that oneness with the Father. Let me read one more to you. It's in Luke. Luke 2, verse 52. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with men. And Jesus grew in wisdom and and stature, and in favor with God and men. And Lori grew with wisdom and stature and favor with God and men. Would you like to put your name in there? Would you like to grow in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man? Would you like to walk those, those ways? It comes from a oneness with God. An intimacy that cannot be replicated and cannot be duplicated and cannot be replaced. Time alone to be filled. Okay, so now if we all want to commit to doing that, here's what, here's what I'm thinking. Oh, to be like Jesus. It's going to look like this. Just quickly go on through the slides, sorry. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm thinking... I'm going to have my quiet place, my quiet place of retreat, and I'm going to fill up with God. But in reality, sometimes it looks a little more like this. Yeah. So I sometimes feel like I can't be with Jesus until that's clean. That I can't have any quiet until there's no chaos. That is not true. Jesus loves you with a messy house. Jesus loves to be with you in your messy house. Jesus loves to be with you with no makeup on. So don't use these performances of that things have to be done and that your time with God is what you do at the end of your to-do list. Ladies, your quiet place is wherever you are with Jesus. It doesn't have to be a clean place. It doesn't have to be a a a kid-free place. You can spend time with Jesus with your children. So maybe it doesn't look like this. Maybe it looks like this. Don't make him compete with your phone. Don't make him compete with social media. Be filled. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the fullness of God. So that you can grow in wisdom and stature and favor with God and men. I'll give you one more past that one. I'm letting to go to my water glasses. All right. So they often reference the Holy Spirit as being filled, right? So I want to just, just show you just a little object lesson. Go ahead and click through these dish. All right. Clearly, the glass is empty. Next one. Clearly, the glass is full. Okay, go back and forth again. Let's just make sure we get it. Empty. Oh, no. Sorry, backwards. Okay, you guys got it? No, 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 not that yet. Okay. Well, basically, I wanted to kind of toggle the images back and forth. And here's kind of the gotcha moment that I want to make sure we have. Empty. Full. Empty, (laughs) full. And there's no other way to get there except with one, two, three, there. All right, there's no way to go from from to a place to fullness except that you would be filled. So, you know, like that scripture that I'm, I'm ready instant in season and out, that is not a disclaimer to never be in season. All right, that means that God is merciful and he'll, he's faithful and he'll give you a word when you need it and he'll be there when you need it. But you've got to give him some ammunition to where he has something to work with. 
You can't be all empty up here with no word and no power and no prayer and then expect that he's going to give you something to recollect, to remember, to bring up. You've got to put something in there so that you can operate in that place of fullness. And so Jesus was able to give up his quiet, intimate time and be with the disciples when he was grieving the loss of John the Baptist because he was already at capacity. He was already full. He was already in that place. The disciples could not afford to give up their time with Jesus because they were already empty. They were already on lack. They were already depleted. And that's why you see them react with a lack of compassion and with anxiety. We can't let ourselves get there and go there. So in closing, I just want to go over these last, this last point here. The spirit of truth comes and he will lead you and guide you into all truth. He will speak only what he hears from the Father. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 5.18. And John, 1 John 4.13. For we know that he lives in us and us in him because he has given us his spirit. And so in closing tonight, ladies, I just want to be quiet for a moment. And I just want us to really soak this in. That we have to live from a place of fullness. And that there's no way to get there except that we be filled. And so being filled takes time. And being filled means being quiet and being fully present before God. So ladies, I just want you to watch this. And surrender to the silence. The unhurried heart, the singleness of focus, be filled with the Spirit. Father God, right now we just repent, Lord. For walking around with low battery. Lord, we repent for the distractions that we have allowed to keep us from being filled with you. God, we repent from the attitudes that our flesh have operated in because we've been empty and we've responded out of our own flesh and out of our own human nature than out of the love of Jesus. And so, God, I thank you, Emmanuel, that you are with us <laughs> and that you're compassionate and you show us mercy. And so, God, in this time of quietness, Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit would come to us to help us. Lord, if we're receiving this word tonight, God, I pray that you would teach us daily, that we would chew on this word and turn off the radio and turn off the distractions, and that we would have an un, unhurried, quieted time with you, God. And Lord, I thank you in faith for what it's going to do for our marriages and for our churches and for our families and for our friendships and for our careers and for the peace in our home when we begin to operate out of the fullness of you and we begin to operate out of capacity. God, instead of deficiency. God, I thank you that you have prosperity for us. You have wisdom for us. You have favor for us to walk in. No good thing do you withhold from him who walks uprightly. God, forgive us that we've missed out on what you wanted to give us. Forgive us that we've been walking around distracted and not full. So, Lord God, I pray over each woman that is here tonight, Father. And, God, I pray that you would create a oneness in him, in them. That you would awaken their hearts to love in a way that they would become comfortable with silence with you, God. That they would feel what it feels like to be laid out completely vulnerable and completely open. And be at peace. And be fully seen and yet fully loved. God, I pray that you would convict our spirits. God, help us to stop this pace at which we do life and help us to create a new pace 
a new pace that is intentionally focused on having time set aside to be infilled with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. God, I pray for the support system around each woman here, God, as I believe in the ministry of woven, God, as I believe in the concept of women coming aside each other, Lord, as we begin to learn how to do that, I pray that friendships would form that would strengthen the ability for people to be connected in quietness with you, God. Teach us, Father. Teach us to be obedient. Teach us to grow. Lord, I ask that you would do this for those of us who are willing, God. We recognize the burden is ours, that, Lord, you are absolutely willing. But it also starts on where we come to meet you. So, Father, we thank you for this, your word, and we ask that you would help us all to call it to action tonight. In Jesus' name. We can actually, if you guys wouldn't mind just coming up for a second, we can just do a little worship. Ladies, I, I would, I want to, I want to ask something of you. Um, if, if you don't attend church at Central Christian Center, could I just see your hand? That is what I'm talking about. Yes! All right. So would you mind turning around backwards and, and look at the sanctuary? Okay, I have no idea how many of us are in here. But I want to tell you, we have the capacity to hold 1,300 women. And guys, Central is, is a blessed church. We have a pastor who hears from the Holy Spirit, but we have like a solid foundation of this, this building as an asset that is paid for, that is able to be used for the body of Christ. And ladies, we're going to have a conference in here. It's going to happen, honestly, whether the seats are filled or not, or whether you're here or not, right? So, so in all the excitement that Shabaka Mom is coming, that's great. I, would, I just want to remind you that we have the capacity to put on this event. God has blessed Central to be able to do it, but the blessing lies in that it can be available for anyone who wants to receive it. And it's not about us. So ladies, I want you to just really sincerely hear my heart that we want this building, this place, to be a place that women can come and be strengthened. We're not trying to steal your women, right? We don't, we don't necessarily want you to have to come to church here. We want to gain togetherness. We want you to be welcomed here. We want you to get strength from us, and we want to get strength from you. And so when we have this conference in July, I'm gonna, we're going to be asking you to help us fill this building. Because you know what? Chewbacca Mom charges the same thing to talk to 200 women as she charges to char talk to 1,300. All right? So will you help us with that ability to bring other women together to fill this building, not for our benefit, but for the glory of God so they can be ministered to and, and, and shared with. Is that okay? Yes. 